Hey, you looking for some secrets? I got them right here. I'm Mike Wazorek, and I've got this podcast. It's called Chicago Real Estate Secrets, and I'm going to share those secrets with you. I'm going to have the top producers and other real estate innovators in our area, and they're going to tell you everything you need to know how to make that money. So tune in every week and check it out. All right, so we got Esther Zamudio with us today on the podcast. We'd love to uh, uh, to thank you for for being on here. It's you know we've been kind of chasing each other around for a little bit, um, and I, I just want to thank you again for taking the time. I know it's valuable with everything going on right now. So again, thank you for for coming on. Um, no, thank you for the invitation, and I know it was being hard, to, you know, to make this appointment, but we're here now. Yes, and well worth it. So. Um, the reason that I wanted to have you on and just to have your story shared is because uh, there's, there's some people when you meet them, you just feel that, uh, you know, they're a good person doing it for the right reasons. And when you're doing it at such a high level, you know, it really begs the question, you know, how, how, how are you doing this? And those around you uh, didn't seem to be very frantic. There wasn't people sprinting around, you know, uh, the office. It seemed to be sorted. Uh, so I, I just love to, to hear a little bit more about how we got here. How do you got, you know, to this place where, uh, you know, you are transacting at a high level, have a lot of people around you. So um, my first question really is, how do you get into the business? You know, where did this all start for you? Did, no one plans like when they're young says, I'm going to be a realtor, right? So how, did, how do you fall into this crazy real estate business? Actually, I started working with an agent as a secretary of job. Huh. And I was bi I'm bilingual, so a lot of people were calling later on and not asking for the agent, they were asking for me. So she one day she closed the door and said, you know, Esther, I think it's time for you to get your license. Sure. People like you more than what I like you because I mean, we will be on the phone explaining things and all that. But I met that realtor, her name was Janet St. John, we will always remember her name, and um, showing the houses to my brother. And by that time, I already went to the library and searched how to buy a home in the U.S. I was not raised here. I came here when I was 50 years old. And um, I went to the library and looked, how do you buy preference and home buyers? So I had a lot of knowledge on how to buy a home by the time we had the first meeting with a realtor. So she says, oh, wow. I says, uh, you need to be get your brother because it was a house for my brother. You need your brother to get uh, do a pre-qualification. I said, no, 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 here, I have a pre-approval from the bank. And she was, how did you not do that? And like, I went to the library, pulled all the information. At that time, we didn't have anything on the internet. Everything you had to walk to the library, look for the books, right. find out more about how to buy a home. And uh, I got my brother pre-approved. We bought our first home and I know all the steps what to take. And from there, she says, you know what? I want you to work for me. So I went and worked part-time with her. And later on, we decided, you know what? I'm going to get my license because a lot of clients were asking for us to not for Janet. So, and that's how I started in the business, being bilingual, taking care of my people, at looking for their needs. I mean, you have to serve, especially the first time home buyers, you have to explain what it takes to be a homeowner. And you got to take the time. And you got to explain, because a lot of people, especially 30, 35 years back, we didn't have internet where people can get the knowledge. So you just do a step by step, you know, do the pre qualification. I do a lot of upfront and the financing with my buyers, and a lot of brokers don't. They prefer just to send directly to the lender and let the lender deal with them. But we, we start looking at like, do you have credit? Do you have employment? So we kind of screen in the clients, the right clients, and maybe help them before they go to a lender and they say, oh, you don't qualify. No, let's let's get you, help you with pre-approval so make sure you're ready to buy a home. And we do a lot of first time buyer's market because we're in the area, the homes probably average under 220 in today's market, 250. So that's a big volume. I mean, we don't sell million to million dollar homes but in a market that you, you gotta treat those people the way that they need. A lot of people, they need the help because they don't know where to start. And a lot of this market, a lot of buyers come with the idea like, can I get down payment assistance? How do I can get down payment assistance? People are not saving like years before. Years before we'll get people who had saved 20, 30% conventional, easy done. Now these days, I don't know if people are spending more money, more credit cards than, you know, I don't know. 
right now, most of home buyers go with a minimum, minimum down payment or down payment assistance. And that's how I started in the business, just being a secretary from there, I got my license and just do good business. Your clients will come to you. You don't have to do marketing. It's just how you serve your client. That's man, no, no statement has ever been more true, right? In sales, in, in life, just take care of people and they won't go away. Right. You know, right, right. Um, and, and I got to tell you, it, it's so uh, um, relevant to me right now, what you said. And I, I remember talking with you the first time we met about you saying uh, the efforts up front and how that's been so helpful. And, you know, you, you kind of, when it is time to pass that, uh, referral over to your trusted lender, it's pretty much ready to go. They just need to get it through the process. Well, it, it almost, man, we've run into, you know, we deal with a lot of, of different uh, realtors. And so everybody kind of has their own strategies, right? Right. And if more people would take that responsibility up front to ask a couple of questions, it serves everybody in the transaction. I mean, everybody, right? It takes care of, understanding what the next step really is. Do they really need to talk to the lender yet? Or have you already clearly identified there's a couple of things they should get in motion and they're going to trust you. They're already talking to you. So, you know, you can give uh, some guidance, right? Uh, up front as to how they get prepared. And it's invaluable because even your referral partners don't get jammed up then you know, with people that are clearly, uh, um, you know, have some, some time, if you will, right? Um, right? Or an easier handoff. It just allows for a smoother transaction. And I think what you said too, uh, about how you started in the business and really kind of letting people know each step of the process, it, we need to go back to that. People think that everybody is so clear on every step and we take that for granted. We do this every day. Most people don't take the time. So I, I honestly, I, I give you, you know, a lot of props for, for still acknowledging that's a huge part of the process because people deserve to understand what they're doing with these hundreds of thousands of dollars of debt. It's a good thing, but they I should know. know. They should and know. a lot of people, they need to know really, are they really ready to buy a home? Do we really, I mean, you, first of all, you got to, sit down with them and find out what do they need, what are their needs. Are they issue by now or maybe we should wait for next year? Because a lot of people really don't want to, I know right now we're stretching ratios, bake ratios, front ratios to get these people, but are really are they ready? We don't, know, we don't want them to get into a house that later on might be an issue, financing issue. Because yes, I mean, they might have good FICO scores, but really we have three car payments, a lot of credit cards and all that. Maybe that's not the time. Maybe we should wait until they pay that off and come back later when they feel more secure and they know that they'll be 100% okay in finance. You know, so right there, you really need to be in their shoes, you know, and, and figure out that these people are ready to buy now, or maybe we should tell them that they should do this and be ready in six months, a year, two years. Who knows? And sometimes we are that independent third party kick in the ass that says, hey, sell one of these vehicles and you can buy a house. Right. Like get, get, get your priorities in order. In the nicest way we say that, sometimes they might have been told or might have known for years that that's the right choice, but they really like this car. But right. sometimes if we're assertive and we know that we're serving them because they want a family home and they need to sell the two or three prized possessions, whatever it happens to be, to either pay down debts to relieve themselves of the debt immediately, sometimes right. we just say, hey, guess what? You're there. You're going to be able to do this. You just got to sell all your shit and then you can buy a house and your family can come home to it. And they're like, okay. okay. And everyone's like, okay, wait, what do you mean? He's, he, we've been asking him for 12 years. You've, we've seen people change their own lives by making quick decisions by just being told when otherwise people had danced around it. And sometimes, man, isn't that the most beautiful thing, right? Like that's really helping people out and, and we have to have those talks. No, you're not ready on paper. This might not be the time. You can get in here, but then what are you gonna, what are you gonna do? What are you gonna, we're gonna sit. We're gonna sit. Mm -hmm. 
So how do you, with that in mind, like how do you find the people that you keep on your team? You know, I, I know that uh, you share my thoughts on the law of attraction and uh, just energy, all that type of stuff, right? So how do you, do you? How, how do, do we you, find the team agents? That, that's the question. Yes, that, that, you, that you share a mindset, that you share a similar mindset with, or that you've, you know, you guys are all working well together. Well, we've been working for years together and just find an agent with experience and they're willing. I want an agent that will take care of my clients, that I know that I'm giving them into good hands. And all my agents are bilingual because um, I'm here where we are and make sure that they're bilingual. I, and also that they care for my clients. I don't want an agent that only cares for the money that they're going to make is care for the clients. So we're going to give them a service. Um, we not only sell in a home, we also is future business. There are people who come here with questions like, how do I pay for a home assumption? What is this? What's an escrow account? If they're first time home buyers, they don't have a clue what's an escrow account. What's a mortgage insurance? Questions that they're going to come in the future. Do I, do I refinance? Can I get rid of my mortgage insurance? So we got to train all these agents and their agents have been with me for a long time that they have experience and they know how to answer the uh, questions and they can pick up their phone in the weekends or in an emergency, you know, we close in a house and the house is flooding now. What do we do? Who do we call? What, what's about, I mean, you have, we want to make sure that we sell to a client that they have our support, not only when they we close in a deal, that they were there for them in the future as well. And there is something that an agent that is knowledge and know how to take care of them or will call me and say, what do we do now? We have an emergency, I mean, a uh, house fire, or what do we do now? Or something like that, you know, we, we got to make sure that there are people that, that they have, you know, they, they're under the same picture they, that they can take care of the client. And um, not as much as, oh, I'm going to make this much money, I'm going to make 300. I mean, money is good, but right here is people that we're dealing with it, you know, and it's an investment that we got to be really careful with that because we want to make sure in the future that they can sell, we can give them some maintenance tips, what to do. If a client calls us like, I want to build a third bedroom as a two bedroom, do I should do that? And well, let's do a market analysis and find out if it's worth building a third bedroom because it might not be, you know, they would never get it. So that's a lot of, knowledge that an agent needs to have and if they don't have it they can find a resource for their client or customer at that time yeah absolutely you know having confidence is one thing having the ability to get the right answer is another so um uh, having those resources available like experience is a big mm -hmm. deal you know the law is the law uh, right. i talked to somebody once um um, who said, you know, every realtor after, you know, you have one realtor that's been doing this for 25 years. You have another one that's been doing it for 25 days. Eventually they have the same amount of knowledge. There's only so much knowledge you have to pick up in the book and knowing the real estate law and how you spoke, how you're supposed to transact, but it's the amount of times the other party has been able to fail and learn from it and go forward, uh, is the difference, the experience of failure. Like you've got to learn, right? And so being able to lean on the person you're left and right and their experiences is a big deal. So um, that's very cool to hear. Um, so the, the next question I have for you with uh, um, regards to the team, okay? Um, right now we are, to date this recording, are still at the you know, end of, we're June 12th. So we're, most are being released Back to work. I believe we're in stage two uh, of the back to work. Four? I don't even know. I don't even, right. I lost control with the stage. Yes. I'll be honest, and you know, it might sound ignorant to some people, but I, 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 I honestly, I don't watch the news or any of it, and so I wasn't really affected by it until I was like, "Whoa, wait! I can't buy." hand sanitizer or cleaning products people are like where you been and i'm like i don't know what have you been doing i've been working you know right. like so for me that question uh to you is uh um not necessarily how are the mindsets of everybody but do, do you speak to your your group about like the perspective like what they choose to to take in content or any of that or you know share what you choose to, 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 you know, let in, if you will, um, and how they uh, uh, take that news 
either into their, their personal lives or work lives? It's difficult because we don't know. This is so new to us. Yeah. I mean, what precautions do we take? How do we deal with from now in the future? Is there going to be something temporary? I mean, do we got to make adjustments in life on our offices, how to take people? I don't know. This is so new that everybody takes their own judgments, you know, mm -hmm. you know, is safe as much as possible and be careful how you, you know, use sanitizer. I mean, I, we don't know what to do at this point. Yeah. Because we're just waiting to see what happens. I mean, this is the end. Are we going to continue? But that's probably something that we're going to have to bring into an office meeting in the next month. And how do we continue? How is going to change our work lives here? So have you guys been active? Uh, oh, yes. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Yes. And yes. so is, it's a whole new world, right? I mean, stuff like this, the video, the Zoom, people before when I was doing a lot of video were like, oh, he's got a new toy. What are you doing right. over there? And now people are hitting me up all over the place. Like, how do we do this? How do I integrate it into my communication? Um, have you guys changed the way? Well, everybody has had to change the way that they communicate with their clients. But are you going to take any of that stuff moving forward as like common practice? We probably have to change. We have to do a lot of modifications. So far, we have not done much. Only the videos that we had done, you know, for sure. It's a big deal, stuff. though. It's a big yeah. change for people right. who haven't done it. But believe it or not, our market, still, people still want to go inside the house. No matter what, even if it's, you know, they're, they're saying, you know, and do you blame them? No. 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 I mean, Let's I got to get moving. This, right. I mean, if you make, if you're buying a 300, 400, 5,000, uh, 500, you got to see the house. You got to see the bones. You got to see the structure. You got to see more details. So you got to touch it. Yeah. <laughs> you got to breathe you it. You got to feel it. Yeah. yeah. You, definitely. That's the way to, to see that. So people really want to go and see the house and, yeah. and just, but I think in a couple months, I think we'll see more and more activity and the real estate right now. Well, we don't have a lot of inventory. So yeah. houses will sell in quick until we have more listings, things will change. It's such an interesting market, you know, because Very it's like, it's a feeding frenzy. You've got so many people. I mean, we have, uh, we have a lot of people that are pre-approved, like very well qualified right. people that have things in order, you know, and they're just waiting either for the right property or to have their, now it's required to have 30 days worth of pay stubs before you can get your final approval. So some people are like hanging in the balance of, can I negotiate that long of a contract? Should I wait that week? And then I'll have my 30 days and then I'll be, so there's all these logistics behind it, but there's like people like just waiting, just wait. Do right. you remember the, the game at uh, different casinos or kids places where it's like all these quarters are being pushed and they're all right. hanging over the edge. Right. That's what I'm feeling are, right now. Right. They're you about, do. We have all those quarters go down. Huh? <laughs> yeah. And it's going to happen. It's going right. to happen. Like we're, we are, we are forecasting a feeding frenzy because of what, I mean, we have the data in front of us. All these people are looking for the, the properties that aren't there yet. Right. Mm -hmm. And the other things that are stopping them from putting in offers but I think the people that have been in contact, the people that have been active and been talking to their clients and saying, hey, how you doing? You need anything are really in for probably one of the best years that they've ever had. It's just this, it's going to happen really quickly, you know, and the people that are ready and have been staying in front of their people, I think are really going to be able to serve I've, and enjoy the, you know, the benefits that come with it. Right. No, we see the market very strong, which is good. I we do have a lot of potential. I think things will work out eventually. You know, it's going to take time, but yeah, it looks good. People are going back to work. A lot of loans are on hold because people need to verify them for me and they're not back to work. So it's it's a little bit difficult for sellers and buyers at this moment. The ones that are closing like this month, the next month, you know, we still have to have those verification of employment before we close. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. Yeah, well, obviously we're seeing it too. And there's a, there's a lot of different restrictions that you obviously know, right. you know, the, the, the uh, uh, self-employed income is now docked. They've got to take 25% right off the top. 
Another thing that just rolled out today uh, or yesterday, um, it, which really isn't that big a deal, it just holds everything up, is that the self-employed borrowers, there's a, a P&L that's necessary, right? Well, oh, yeah. they had to provide P&Ls forever, but now they have to actually follow up with bank statements to prove uh, of the passage. Yeah. Right. And so, sure, uh, I'm sure every loan that's ever been done, they all match up. But it's just another thing that has to, you know, has to go through underwriting. And what that opens up is all the other transactions. Well, it's just, it's going to delay the process. doesn't mean that they can't get there to approval, but it's going to, it's going to require gonna take a lot time. documentation. Right. Yeah. Um, which is okay, I guess, because that's the biggest thing has been communication. And we've been able to ask for crazy extensions. Like, can we extend this contract for 60 days? Have you been doing that because of the employment? Oh, yes. Oh, yeah. definitely. Because of verification, you know, we, a lot of times we need to ask 30 days. So some of them probably yeah. did not even close because we cannot verify the seller and say, why not? We give up on doing the extension. So cancel a deal. So here goes another. Why? Because of it's so important that we get that ver those people back to work yeah. to get the verification of employment. Yeah. Yeah. And hopefully they yeah. ease up on the guidelines in tandem with that. I you know. know. The only thing that I didn't like, to be honest with you, with all this crisis, they decided to increase the FICO score. For increasing FICO score, what are you doing? Getting less people to get a mortgage. So don't do this. I mean, why do we increase in the FICO score? I mean, if they have a job, <laughs> you know? And a lot of times, we everything in these days is based on FICO score. And I think I like the old days before, let's see the whole scenario to see why these people have low FICO score. And a lot of times, yeah. they doesn't have to do anything with credit, you know? I, I mean, when they, how you establish your credit, how you've been paying and all. But let's look at the whole scenario, the whole picture, and let's not be so tough on a FICO score. I understand that you gotta be, but, and, and the pandemic, instead of lowering the FICO score, you increase me the FICO score, so less people are gonna be able to get a mortgage now. You know, so, and I agree with you, and, and I just, I, I wanna make sure that we have enough time for some of these questions. And I really only have one, one more that I would love to, to hear from you too. So like, this is, it, it's obviously just wild, the changes. And, uh, you know, it's never going to go back to whatever we thought normal yeah. was. And the new normal is still to be determined. Um, it's obvious that you feel like taking care of people is going to drive success in whatever that means to somebody, right? Um, what do you see for you and for the team next? I mean, how do you serve at a high level um, without really knowing what's coming. I mean, do we go like back to educate ourselves on the law? Do we find comfort in video and make sure we stay in front of people with more mark? Like what is it in front of you that allows you to continue to serve or progress in that ability to, to help more people? I think we have to have better communication with our clients, definitely, maybe more like what you're doing now, more sure. videos. I mean, we have to, maybe what we need to do is just um, do a survey and see what we, what, what we need to improve. Mm. What yeah. do we need to improve? What are the clients would like us to do different than what we're doing now, okay? Yeah. Why? Right now, if you ask me, what are we going to do different? Be honest with you, I'm confused because do I do it this way? But do I miss a lot of clients? Because a lot of clients are still want to walk in. You need to sit down with them, spend the time. They don't like the uh, over the uh, computer stuff, you know. All the things, which clients have you dealing with them? All the yeah. people that they prefer face-to-face -face and you go to their house, sit down with them and explain details. A lot of people will might not be able to do it, might not. A lot of people says, you know, saves me time, let's do it this way. So I think you take it case by case. And how are we gonna change that? Well, we still have to delegate how we really will be the, the right way to do it. I think you're already built for it. You know, it's, it's uh, I think it's the, the same lesson I learned from, you know, quarantine, if you will, with my three kids. It's right. uh, slow down, you know, slow down. 
and mm -hmm. uh, you can do more when you slow down. And I was talking about this too, multitasking, that, that term was never supposed to be used for humans, right? It's, it's literally the ability to do two things or multiple things simultaneously with the same efficiency, right? And as humans, we can't. We can't do that. So we have to focus, right? Right. The mm -hmm. kids and the attention that they require and the, the work at the same time, it's neither one are going to get what they deserve. But now if we really understand time block and yada, 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 where I'm going with that, though, is what you're saying is slow down and look at the case by case scenario and listen mm -hmm. and then proceed accordingly. They will tell you if you ask or if you certainly listen how they want and need to be taken care of. Correct. So I think you guys have always kind of been built like that. You know, and uh, coupling more uh, video is going to be the easier thing. Most people are going to have a hell of a time making the switch because they got to learn how to slow down and take care of those individuals rather than just, you know, buzzing over the tops of their heads. You just got to put your, your pretty face on video more and you're good to go. <laughs> so that's i, I want to thank you for your time you know it might have sounded or uh, seemed like it they were surface questions but i think the common thread and and what i consider these secrets are just 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 be you and talk and listen to people right. and go through life trying to help and you won't have any shortage of friends or clients that want you as their you know their counsel in this um right. I want to give you a second if there's anything though that you do want to say or, or, or share or, or otherwise, you know, just get out there about what's going on or the, the business or people, anything you want to share at all. No, I wanted to make sure that everybody takes care of herself and their families. Be safe, you know, be cautious of what, what's going on. We don't know what's going to take us with this pandemic. I hope everything is done soon. Everybody is hoping for that and just respect each other. You know, yeah. a lot of people not happy about what's going on and just, I think it respect each other more and yeah. take care of, of family and everybody else around you and business. When clients come, be you. Don't be in nobody else's. Be yourself. Help them. Okay? And it seems so simple, but it's so powerful. It really is, right? Just be, be yourself, yourself and help. Yeah, help. Yeah. yeah. Be there for look, that. Look for ways to help. Yes. Right. Um, and if people want to hear, you know, from you or more about you or want to get in contact with you or your team to hear more about what you're doing, how can they do that? They can always call us or email us in our uh, office number, direct number, 847-608-6600. 608-6600, or you can email us at astrozumudio at outlook.com. Astrozumudio at outlook.com. Okay. And we'll also put the contact information uh, with the podcast, but thank you again for your time. We know it's valuable. We appreciate the positive uh, message and uh, just, just keep it moving. I love the message. Let's just keep it moving. Okay, great. Thank you for the invitation. You take care. My Goodbye. Bye-bye.